FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Welcome to Faux Mondays, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens, which, of course, will drop a full episode, the season premiere of season 10, this Thursday. But until then, happy Faux Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night. And of course, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now listen, we have our season premiere on Thursday. It's a big one. And it features Kara Goucher, the story of Kara Goucher, who was an Olympian, a, a leading member of the U.S. track and field team. She made the podium at major marathons around the world, a total superstar. And she was selected for this extraordinarily elite running team based in Oregon that was part of Nike, had a lot of mystique around it. And it really had a lot of buzz. And unfortunately, it became like a prison for Kara. And so this elite exclusive thing was used to manipulate her and she had to find her way back. So we talk about that. We talk about that in the interview, the power of exclusivity. And the thing is, it is incredible if you think about how exclusivity is used, whether it's the velvet rope at the nightclub, whether it's how Elizabeth Holmes basically told people like, oh, I don't want your money, and then would use that to get really famous people to invest and then tell everybody it was like this exclusive club. I mean, there are a million examples of how exclusivity is used to get people to do crazy things because they want in, right? And that is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool. And in fact, it's been written about, Robert Cialdini talks about it in his work. We had him on the show back along. And it is a big driver of FOMO as well. And so, you know, I want to talk about that because it doesn't have to be all bad. In the interview with Kara, the way that we talk about this, well, in the beginning, it looked pretty good, actually, right? Because she was selected for this really elite thing. And because she was selected, everybody in the world knew that. And so it kind of gives her this air of, you know, inevitability that she's going to be very successful, she and the other people selected. So that is, you know, that's good, then it became something very corrupted and very negative. So obviously a good thing taken in the wrong direction, you know, we don't support that. But I do think it's important to understand this power because if you're fundraising for your company or you're launching a new product or you're opening a restaurant or you are, you know, doing anything where you're trying to get people excited and have some buzz, then using exclusivity can be very powerful. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing. It can be very, very healthy. Now, obviously, one big part of exclusivity is that you don't want to do something misleading, right? That is not a place you want to be. So if you're if you're fundraising and you're pulling a little Elizabeth Holmes like that, we would not talk about. That's not something we're going to talk about as a positive here on FOMO Sapiens. But if you are using exclusivity to drive a bigger narrative, to tell a story, to get buzz, to get people excited, to generate FOMO and demand, that's totally fair game. So that is what I want to talk about today, right after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, everybody. I am going to tell you the big secret to exclusivity. You know, I've thought a lot about this and it's really about nine things, okay? The number one first driver of exclusivity is limited availability, right? So with Kara, it was a small group of people that were selected. It wasn't for everybody to be on this running team. Now, a great example of this is how Supreme does stuff. If you don't know Supreme, they're this retailer and they make really expensive, I wasn't gonna say overpriced. I'm thinking overpriced, I'm not gonna say overpriced because, you know, somebody wants to pay it. Expensive stuff, but they make very few of them. You have to line up and it's a whole situation because it's limited availability. 
And that is powerful. So if you want to drive exclusivity, start in terms of quantity. Make it small. Number two, also make it hard to get in. You ever hear a Soho House? So Soho House is a little easier to get into these days because it's a public company. And so, you know, they got to make money. But it used to be really hard to get in. Supposedly, Kim Kardashian didn't even get in. Now, I'm a member of Soho House, and I don't say that in a braggy way. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not like, you know, I'm Brad Pitt over here. So <laughs> normal people get, I know lots of people are members, but it had this early vibe around it that it was like super hard to get into. And that made people really excited to go and want to go. And so that is important too. Just make it hard to get in. Even if it's just perception, not reality, that's very powerful. Number three, social proof. I got to tell you, anybody here watch White Lotus? Every time a hotel is on White Lotus, everybody wants to vacation there. The place in Italy apparently overrun now. Social proof, getting people who are, you know, tastemakers to say that this place is great, like a TV show that makes it look beautiful. Then everybody wants it. It looks so exclusive. It looks so amazing. Everybody wants in social proof. Number four, mysteriousness. So I like to think about Skull and Bones. That's that private club at Yale that, you know, supposedly every president who went to Yale was a member of. Nobody even knows really what they do. Like there's a lot of myths that like if you're trying to get into Skull and Bones and you're being hazed that you have to lie on top of a casket and, you know, that they have like the head of Geronimo in their little house on the, the Yale campus. But that mysteriousness, if you can imbue whatever you're trying to launch with mysteriousness, People get excited. They want to know. It catches the attention. It gets a little more kind of vibe. This is very powerful. Number five, premium pricing or no price at all. Either give it away or charge a lot. I know it sounds nuts, right? But it is true that people value stuff that they pay a lot for. Or if you give something away to tastemakers and say, we're giving this away because you're so wonderful. Oh, they just love that. And they'll talk about it. It's kind of like influencer marketing. Powerful. Number six, invite only. Invite only. It's like, you know, these fashion shows you, you see on Instagram. It's like the front row. It's Emma Watson and Anna Wintour and whoever else. Invite only events and experiences. They cultivate incredible exclusivity. And if you're launching a product and you have a launch party and you only invite 50 people, but you let everybody know that it happened and you have pictures and things like that, but it's a curated thing. It's going to drive buzz. It's, it's incredible. I mean, all this stuff, it, it works. You know, there's a reason why people do it. <laughs> Seven, collabs and partnerships. Here's a great example that I love, Sweetgreen. Sweetgreen did a collab with Simone Biles, like Simone Biles Salads. They did a collab with Peloton teachers. Like that just drives. It's like, it's a salad brand. If you don't know Sweetgreen, it's basically a salad chain. It used to be pretty good. Now they've really gone down in quality, in my humble opinion. I still, you know, I still respect the brand. I just don't go there anymore because they put like two pieces of lettuce in the bowl and call it a salad. But it used to be really cool. And they would do these collaborations with just these tastemakers and these interesting people and athletes that we aspire to be like. Like who doesn't want to be like Simone Biles, right? She's an incredible talent. And so you do these collaborations with brands uh, another another one that's really kind of fun in this space is Rowing Blazers. We had Jack Carlson on the show. Rowing Blazers is an apparel company. They do all these cool collabs. They did one with Gucci recently. It just makes you you're like, wow, there is some heat on that brand. Number eight, personalize and customize. Now, this is really hard to do, right? It's really hard to do. But again, that is exclusivity. I got, I won this random, this is really odd. I won this random gift once where you you kind of, they collect your DNA, I guess you swab your mouth and then they supposedly make a, like a, like a moisturizer out of your DNA that's made for you. I haven't really used it because uh, it sounds complicated, but I remember thinking like, wow, how exclusive is that? So just hyper customization, which is something that of course with technology is becoming easier and easier. And finally, maintain quality and consistency. So like all the other things are great, but if the product stinks, it ain't gonna last. And so that is, I think about that movie, The Menu. If you've seen, not seen that, you, it's worth watching. Just like excellence, making something truly great. Great hotels do this, like training and culture, all this sort of stuff. It makes a huge difference. So if you have a lousy product, doesn't matter how many 
mysterious, social proof driven, invite only events you have. It, it's not going to work. Exclusivity at the end of the day, it has to be driven by substance. All right, everybody. Those are my nine. Again, limited availability, hard to get in, social proof, mysteriousness, premium pricing or no pricing at all, invite only, collabs and partnerships, personalization and quality. Those are the things. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday for our season premiere with Kara and Mary Plon, who helped write the book about her experiences. They wrote it together and it's a really good conversation. I'm really excited for it. So get ready and until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.